Good morning, I'm Pastor Tom Evans and welcome to our Sunday morning service. It's the first Sunday after Christmas and we are so glad you're joining us here online. We're doing online because of the fact we've had COVID hit the staff and you know, we want to keep everybody safe. So this morning we're going to be doing last year's service. So please follow along with the service. Uh, you'll truly be blessed by the music and the words and everything else. And you know what? If we don't remember anything else, the epistle lesson for this Sunday, which is from Colossians, I love this because it really hits home for us today. Colossians 3.12, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds us together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Man, that's what it's all about right now. Let the peace of Christ rule in all of our hearts. Hey, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you here next Sunday in person in the sanctuary, 9 a.m., one service, because it is New Year's weekend. So 9 a.m., in person. And if you have offerings before that, if you'd like to get them in before the first of the year, you can either send them in or you can give offering online. But the biggest message is, in all of this uh, craziness, let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Hey, happy holidays and Merry Christmas. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated as we speak the intro at half verse by half verse. The Lord, had, the Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
of the college. O oh God, our maker and redeemer, you wonderfully created us, and in the incarnation of your Son, yet more wondrously restore our human nature. Grant that we may ever be alive in him who made himself to be like us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This morning's Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, chapter 61, beginning with verse 10, going into chapter 62. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself out like a priest with a beautiful headdress and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson this morning is from the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his, his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of our gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. When the time came for the purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Do offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. His and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit in the temple, and when the parents brought in the babe child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and the rise of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed and the sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts for many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanel in the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years before from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 40, 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping and fasting and praying night and long, prayer, fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began 
to give thanks to God and speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated as we say our next hymn, In His Temple Now Behold Him. Did everybody have a good Christmas? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had we went to yeah, we went over to Michael's last night. Ryan's coming over tonight with his family. Next weekend we get uh, to be with Tyler and Lindsay and the new baby Cooper. Uh, so yeah, for us it was a little weird because normally, you know, we all would gather together and well Weird holiday, to say the least. Very quiet, very low-keyed. But you know, it was actually pretty good for me because I could actually stop and take a breath and just kind of relax, you know? In a way, it was finding peace in this very, really crazy time. Understanding also the light of the world and, and the gift it means to me. I mean... That might sound crazy, but I even have to listen to my sermons and, uh, you know, take it in and go, what does that mean for me? And I could say, like Simeon, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. Don't get me wrong, I'm not ready to go anywhere anytime quick. I'm not ready to check out of this world. But I think I'm beginning to understand the peace in which Simeon was talking about. And it's my hope and my prayer for all of you that are here and all of you who are online with us that you will learn, glean from our gospel lesson today and you also will know the peace that Simeon had and that we all have because of the light of the world. Now we use the song of Simeon from our gospel lesson for today, that moment takes that baby into his arms. So verses 28 to 32. <clears throat> Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, 
Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. You know, I wonder about the elderly Simeon, that, that moment you know, I wonder if his hair stood up on the back of his neck like, wait a minute, somebody just came into the temple and it's the one I've been waiting for. You know? You just got to wonder what was his motivation or what, what moved him to focus in on the baby Jesus. The Old Testament law back then was... Uh, First off, if, you had your, if your firstborn was a male, you brought him to the temple to be dedicated and give a thanksgiving sacrifice. Usually it was just, they, um, from what I've read and saw, it was usually just a turtle dove and stuff, so it wasn't like a... The big sacrifice is if you took a bull out of your, out of your uh, herd and sacrificed that, because that, that, that really... But it wasn't... You get what I'm going with that. But the interesting thing is, also the women had to go through a rite of purification. Now, I found this quite interesting because I'm not quite sure what the difference would be. But if, ladies, if you had a boy, you had to wait 40 days before you could go back into the temple. If you had a girl, <laughs> you had to wait 80 days before you went back into the temple. Uh, I have no idea. If you guys got any Jewish friends or a rabbi friend, ask them. Maybe they could shed some light on that whole thing. But that's what they were doing there. It was the 40th day, rite of purification for Mary, and dedicating their firstborn son. Now, Simeon had a promise from God. God told him, look, you're not going anywhere until after you see the Messiah that we've all been waiting for. And look, the promise came true. Here he is holding in his arms that Messiah that was to come into this world to bring about change like you would not imagine, that would do things that none of the rest of us ever could do. A true gift from God. And I love what he says here. I mean, think about this. You get the baby Jesus in your arms. You know the promise. I would be thinking, holy, I'm going to die now. <laughs> and you can fill in the space there. Holy, I'm going to die now. But, but that's not what he said. He said, look, I can depart in peace. You know, and I, I wonder too if part of it wasn't I can depart because I have a funny feeling. He hung around the temple a lot waiting for this promise of God to be, to be held and to see and everything. So it might even be a, hey, now you can relax for a little while before you go home to heaven. I don't know, but either way. And secondly, he tells us what this child is. It's a light to the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. I love that. But now, what does all that mean for you and I? What does it mean for everybody who's hearing this message? Well, what can I say? This year's been kind of tough on all of us. Um, you know, we've got to ask ourselves, where have we put our faith in the past year? I mean, I think the gener most of the generation in here, you all remember the Vietnam War and, and how we would gather around dinner table at night, we'd turn the TV on and get the body count, right? People are doing that now with COVID. So, you know, where, where are we putting our faith? In the doctors, the politicians... Are we putting fear over faith? I mean, there's so many things happening. But have we forgotten the promise given to us? 
Have we forgotten the promise that God our Father gave to each and every one of us? We talked about it on Christmas Eve. Remember what Simeon said, or remember what Jesus said before he left us to go be with his father. Most people remember, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But what was the rest of his promise? Lo, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. I'm with you always. We've seen the baby Jesus. We've celebrated his coming into this world. And here now is the big question. Because we celebrated this a year ago, right? The birth of Christ. And the year before that, and the year before that. You know, I've celebrated at least 61 times. 62 now. But did we in this past year forget that he would be with us Always, not just when he wanted, not just when Jesus thought it might be the right time to pop into our lives, not just in the good times, but at all times, in COVID, in sickness, even in death. When we fear for our lives, when we take that last breath, did we forget that even then Jesus will be with us? I mean, how many times have we heard the story of Simeon, right? For us, and maybe she's listening, um, we call her our mama bear, my cousin out in Rapid City. Um, she doesn't say we're old people or senior citizens. We're mature. So, so <laughs> for us mature adults, how many times have we sung the liturgy? Right after communion, remember the old TLH, right after communion. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. And I'll bet you the rest of you could just click it off and sing the rest of it, right? And I'm sorry I cursed you because you're going to be singing that the rest of the day in your brain. Going, Lord, now let us thou thy servant. At least that's the way it is with me. I get that in my head and I can't get it out of there. But that's okay. Did we ever really think what we were saying coming away from the communion table? Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace. Have we thought really what it meant for him and more importantly, what it means for us? Here's what I want you to do today. Take a breath. Take a breath. Remember that God has promised that he would be with us all the time. Jesus said, I will be with you always. And through the gift of Jesus and what he did for us, and through the gift of the Holy Spirit, he will be with us through the lockdowns, through COVID, even as we say our goodbyes to loved ones. If you've had a chance to say your goodbyes to a loved one with me when we do the rite of uh, uh, commendation of the dying, we, we use that passage. Lord, now let thy servant depart in peace. Truly, it's a gift that we have. Are we using it? When we fear things, things that we can't control, remember this. God is in control. He is there with you. And we can have that same song. Sovereign Lord, as if you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for the revelations to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Now you might be thinking, <clears throat> when did I see that? When did I see him? Well, how about the day your heart and eyes were opened when your parents brought you to the baptismal fount? How about that day when you said, come Lord Jesus, truly be in my life? How about that day when you truly realized 
what Jesus has done for you? How about the, each time you take, partake of the sacrament of the Lord's body and blood? How about just even this last week when you celebrated the baby Jesus in his love for all? You know, the Christmas spirit. Jesus Christ came to be a light to us. We are the goy. We are the, we are the goyim, plural, but you are goy. You are Gentile. And that light takes the darkness out of our lives. That light warms our heart in knowing we're not in this alone. We are loved unconditionally. We are forgiven unconditionally. That light that gave his life so that we might live. The light that conquered sin and death. That light is Jesus Christ. So today, hear the words of Simeon and live them. I'm going to end the sermon, not my normal way, so that's a warning. Not that it's a bad way I usually end. But since we were talking about the old liturgy, the other thing that came to my mind <clears throat> was how um, the mature pastors that we have known used to end their sermons. I mean, we always would begin with grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, or may the, yeah. But they always ended with this. And now, may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us continue as we confess together our common faith found in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, the very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Most heavenly and gracious Father, we come before you thankful, thankful for this day, thankful for the reminder that of the peace that comes only through you. Oh, that we would have the peace like Simeon had, that we look towards you every single day, that we look for the ways that you're in our life, look for the ways that you're working in our lives and looking for the ways that we can serve others in our life. Lord, we pray for those who are in need of your healing touch, Ken and Matt and all those who are hearts and minds, as they deal with COVID and other illnesses. Lift them up, Lord. We lift them up with their mind and spirit, and we ask that you would cover them with your love and your peace, that they may have peace during this time. 
peace for those family members as well as they're by their sides or waiting to see them. Lord, we also lift up to you those who are mourning, those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Lord, we just pray for all of them. Cover them with your love as well, peace and comfort. Let them continue to look for the memories, but find the treasures that they have in those loved ones, that they too may be reminded and be pointed towards you for all that they do. Lift up to you, Lord, those who are serving a country throughout the world. Keep them safe and out of harm's way, that they would return home safely to the family members. And Lord, most importantly, Lord, we ask that you would continue to be in our lives, that as we go out from this place, that we can share the peace that is beyond our understanding, that we receive it, but we share it with others that only comes through you. We ask now all this in your Son's name we pray. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in whose betrayed, took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and gave to his disciples, saying, Take any, this is my body which is given for you. Do this, remembrance of me. In the same manner also, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave to them, saying, Take and drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, all of you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, we, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
willing, thank the Lord. Thank you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. We close our worship today with They Came Upon a Midnight Clear. <laughs> <laughs>